for Joaquin Ortiz. He is a man of God. Um, he loves the Lord, and he loves God's people. Um, and he loves uh, the children of the Lord as well. He is a father, a husband. Uh, he's a co-worker for me. Amen. Um, and he uh, is my friend. Amen. And I thank God for what he has done in our lives and what he is still continuing to do. Um, I hope that you are ready uh, to hear the word of the Lord uh, because it is what's going to keep us. Amen. And we thank God that he has prepared himself to do just that. So after we have a selection from this uh, wonderful youth choir.
I'll say maybe 30, 40 minutes, but I'm excited because we need to bring them back together and start anew. We gotta shake it off of what's going on. If you allow me for a few minutes, I wanna to go to the book of Acts. And then I'm gonna say right now that in this row right here, I'm hoping that you pull the book of Acts. I'm gonna be looking at you to read with a preacher's voice loud on certain, on certain verses. Is that all right? All right. Okay, so I'll be coming from the book of Acts. Verse, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled up all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, comma, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to lift up, we're all filled with the Holy Ghost. O oh, precious Father, Lord, allow me to be a vessel for you. Sit me aside and have your words come out. Lord. Use me as your vessel. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen and amen. We're going we're gonna to get into this uh, topic because uh, sometimes there's a lot of convolution about it. But this is an important day. Important day. And I want to talk to the Holy Ghost filled saints. I know that they're out there. Saints that have been fire baptized and those with his power. Those that hear the voice of truth. I want to talk to the ones that are filled with the Holy Ghost that can feel it and say, it will be done by the mighty name of Jesus. I want to talk to those that think that they have the Holy Ghost. The ones that get a quickening, a good feeling inside, don't know what's going on, just and it fizzles out. The ones that at times grieve it by mistake and they don't know how to listen because they're talking. Gotta listen. In order to listen, we have to stop talking so we can hear. And I want to talk to those that don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Those that look at holiness as a problem, restricting on your, on your freedoms, and you speak against it. The ones that look at sanctification as a brainwashing, restrictive way of living. So when you read the book of Acts, and you see the word filled, you can see it all throughout. And here goes the first one. So I'm gonna read Acts 4 and 8. Chapter 4, verse 8, real loud. Anyone, somebody. Chapter 4 and 8. What did you say, Peter was what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Awesome. Now, Acts 4, verse 31. Anyone, anyone. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. They were what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 7, verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he was full of the Holy Ghost. And the last one, Acts 9 and 17. 9 and 17. Thou camest, have sent me 
that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So to recapitulate what we just said, Acts 4 and 8, Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 4 and 31, they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 7 and verse 55, Stephen being full of the Holy Ghost. And Acts 9 and 17, where Ananias prayed for Saul to be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's something about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being full that it separates you from the world. Something about being full that gives you the boldness to speak the word of God. Something about being full that will make an assembly shake when you pray. Being filled makes a difference. Hallelujah. It makes a difference. You feel the power. You feel the very spirit of God inside of you. There's a glow all over you. You feel alive. Nothing can stop you. The very power of God is within you. You feel more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. In order to appreciate this text today, we have to go back to before the Passover. Back to when Jesus walked with us, preaching and healing the people. Back at a time when John witnesses Jesus say, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, and he may be with you forever. Further down in John 14 and 26, Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Why is that important? Fast forward for 40 days after the resurrection, during the time frame just before his ascension to heaven, Jesus commands them not to leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about. Literally this. Why would Jesus, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the son of man, the son of God, the resurrected son of God reiterate, which you heard have heard of this before? Why would he say that? Were they not listening? Was he emphasizing, you better listen now? Did one of them believe, did not believe in what he was saying before? Was there another Judas in the midst? Were there just a whole bunch of Christian groupie fans in the crowd? I once heard that a man's promise is a comfort to a fool. And now that we're in this world, we can say that the hustle to get over on you is real. How many of you have had empty promise experiences? Someone made a promise and they didn't deliver. They told you the check was in the mail, but the box is empty. They told you to death do us part and now you're divorced. They told you that they love you just to have sex with you. They told you to vote for me. I promise better this and better that, only for you to hear that again four years later. A friend, a family member borrows some money from you, they tell you, I promise, I'll pay you back. You got my word. The time comes and goes, you're still waiting and looking like boo-boo the clown. Empty promises. If you look at the functionality of a promise, the promiser is empowered to deliver while the promisee is disempowered to do something themselves. The promiser is given something they have control and the promisee is receiving something they lack. The promiser verbalizes his intent. The promisee believes it will happen. Making a promise is simple. The big issue is can you deliver? Will you come through? But when you look at Jesus, when you look at this promise, it's not an ordinary promise. It's a marvelous blessing of comfort and support. He got your back. 
and assured us that the Father will not leave us alone and will take care of us. The Bible says, when the helper comes, whom I will send you, send to you from the Father, that the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. If you go back, when the helper comes, not if, not maybe, but when the helper comes, there's a condition for the Son of Man to be with the Father in order for the Holy Ghost to come. Jesus continues and says, it is to your advantage that I go away because if he did it, the helper will not come to you. But if he did, I will send him to you. I am here to tell you that the time has come that you too shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. In John 14 and 26, John uses the word paracletus when he describes helper, but paracletus also means advocate. Why would I need an advocate? Who say? Is it because some folk look at salvation as something at the cross, something to cross off at their list? I'm saved now, check. And there is no commitment? Do they go around saying I'm good, I'm saved, nothing can go wrong? I mean, I already profess. That Jesus is Lord. I believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I even looked apart. I got the t-shirt, the bumper sticker. And I even got a cross with bling on it. And I go around saying I'm blessed. But my question to you, my friend, is how are you living? How do you know that what you're doing is not out of your own self-righteousness? Who's defining you? Are you blinded by narcissism saying that I'm all that in a bag of chips? How do you know what truth is? Who tells you about this? Is it the government that tells you about the truth? Is it the celebrities, the media, your family, your friend, your boo? How do you know the truth? I'm here to tell you that only the helper, only the comforter, only the advocate will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Only the spirit of truth can guide you into all the truth. Only he, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will speak and disclose what is to come. Why does this matter? Why does it matter? When you see what's going on in Pentecost thousands of years ago, a multitude of people were celebrating in Jerusalem. Among them there was 120 men and women, all in the upper room. They were different. They had a purpose and they had a spirit of expectation. They had been with Jesus, walked with him, heard from him, Christ himself, not to lean and to wait. They had one accord. One belief, one promise, just like we are right now. Right now, there's a spirit of expectation. Expectation that I will experience the Holy Ghost. We are here because we believe. We are here because we have faith. We are here because we have hope. We are here in one accord. We are here to experience God's power. Only his power can break a chain. Only his power can make a way. Only his power can keep us, help us, and comfort us. I'm here to tell you the world is not, will not, and cannot be in one accord. The world has a selfish agenda. Me, myself, and I. Turn the TV on, go to the internet, you will see nothing but violence, racism, disobedience, you name it. Some of it even seeps into the home, into your church, into your school. You become a walking dead man, an emotional wreck, 
a suicide statistics. But I'm here to tell you, the more that we walk this walk, the more you live in this life, the closer that you get to him, the more the enemy will attack you. You see, you're a hot commodity. My God. If, you're, if everything is good and everything is happy, happy, joy, joy, nothing is going wrong with you and you're just content because you're good, what I'm saying right now that the devil has you where he needs you. But if you're going through trials and tribulations and you're asking yourself, why me? And then you say, why me, Lord? And then you say, Lord, it's me again. Then you know that you're different. Then you know that you're getting closer. You're going to have trials. And you're going to have tri tribulations. You're going to go through things. What I go through, you're not going to go through. What you think is, is uh, hard to do, I may look at it differently. But we all have our own specific trial and tribulation that we will go through. The enemy will use subtle attacks to take you out of God's will. One of my favorite scriptures, and I wish I could remember it for its totality, but I have to say the scene, is when Peter is walking with Jesus. And Peter in his anxiousness says to him, Lord, you're not going to die or something like that. And Jesus says, get ye back, Satan. Jesus, Peter was just, how many times do we do that, that we want to just say something nice? And it's the devil talking. That's how subtle the enemy is. He will seek you, he will kill you, and he will destroy you. I'm not trying to make you scared. I'm telling you what the Bible says. If he can't get you, he will work on your family, your finances, your health, your relationship with God. I'm here to tell you not to get distracted. The enemy will sift you away and chalk you up, just like in those uh, crime movies, chalked up on the sidewalk. Dead man, chalked up. You need to tell the enemy to get behind us. Tell him to get out of your life. Get out of your finances. Just get out. Stay focused on the cross. You're going to run into personalities that you're going to say, what in the world? They're going to try to distract you. And the enemies of I don't know, he's going to try to distract you. If he can get you out of God's will, the enemy has won. You need the helper. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. You need the comforter. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. You need an advocate, that's why you need the Holy Ghost. You need someone to guide you. you got, that's the only way you're gonna get keep focused on God. That's the only way it's gonna happen. And we need to, we just have to recognize that there's an emptiness in our lives before you can be filled. An empty cup is an empty cup. It's not till something is poured into it that it gets filled. An empty vessel is an empty vessel. The Bible tells me in Ephesians 18 and 21, don't be drunk with wine because it will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God, the Father in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So when things are not going right, I say to you, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be joyful, be thankful, and submit to one another. Joy is not confused with being happy. You don't get a you know, joyful birthday, you get a happy birthday. It's two different things. Happy is temporary, joy is eternal. Joy is in your spirit. Whether it's raining, you got no money, no job, no house, folk ain't treating you right, you still have to have joy. We need to have his joy, the joy that makes us full knowing that he is a very present help. And be thankful each day. 
Oh God. One thing I've learned from this pandemic is that tomorrow is not promised and it has been reiterated over and over and over again. Because I may not see you tomorrow. So Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for waking me up. Lord, I thank you for putting me in my right mind. Lord, I thank you for the activity in my legs, Lord. Lord, I thank you for my family, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the church, Lord. Lord, I thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tomorrow is not promised. Let's be thankful. And be submissive to one another. Love one another. Everyone, no matter who they are, what they've done to you. Being submissive is not being weak or being a punk. It's just be showing sure reverence to God. Yeah. Turn the other cheek. Yeah. Love everyone. Pray with them. Pray for them. Tomorrow, again, is not promised. Be delighted in God's will and have his love within your heart. You know, knowing what I know, what I know, what I know, that he's saying, what, all I want him to say is, well, God, well done. If someone comes to me and they're in adversity, I'm going to say, how can I help you? And you're going to say, that's not going to happen. But I have to try in my heart to be joyful, thankful, and submissive. To be filled. To look at someone and say, it's going to be all right. And they're just yelling at me. For me to say in my heart, Lord, just touch their heart right now. Save them, Lord. Go in their mind, Lord. Encourage their spirit. Lord, whatever it is, whether it's something in the past, a generational curse that wasn't broken, Lord, just fix it right now for my brother because he needs to be you or she needs to be saved. Yeah. That's ministry. Yeah. That's being filled. If you want the gift to be filled in your life, then you have to be joyful, thankful, and be submissive. Each day rest on God's word. Each day with prayer and supplication. Each day walking with God, you will see yourself being transformed, being filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll find yourself in one accord with your brothers and your sister, one accord with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You will know you've been filled. You will know when the Holy Ghost fall upon you. You won't pretend to speak in tongues. You won't live a double life. You've been set aside, separated, and sanctified. You're holy because God is holy. You're going to feel the power within you. You're going to have the power to heal sick, the power to cast out demons, the power to prophesy. Holy Ghost power. When you can look at something and say, it is done, it's going to happen, Jesus is going to do it, God's going to work it out. Boldly. Not trying to make you feel good, saying it's going to happen. When I put my hands out, I said, Lord, make it happen. Not me, Lord. You, Lord, make it happen for them. And if this is my last day, Lord, Lord, just look at me and say, job well done. But I need to be filled. Becoming a Christian does not protect you from trouble. Some of us are about to quit. We're about to throw the towel that's like stuck in our hand. You keep trying and you try to get ahead. One step forward, two step backward. You're tired of COVID-19, tired about wearing the mask, tired about not wearing the mask, tired of being in the house, tired of hearing about death, tired of government lies, tired of police brutality, tired of family insanity. Furlough and fire feels the same way. No college, no graduation, no funeral. Don't know whether you're coming or you're going. You're just tired. Don't give up. If it rings in your ear when you feel like you're going to quit, quitting is not one of the choices. You got to stand firm on that solid rock. Jesus told us in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome, I have come to overcome the world. So don't be dismayed. Hold on. Just hold on. It's all right. To cry. The Bible tells us weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. He had to die so that you can live. 
He had to die to send a helper. He had to die to send the comforter. He had to die to send the advocate. There's a gift that will always be with you forever. A gift that will teach you all the things, bring things to your remembrance. A gift that contains the spirit of truth. There's that one movie where they yell out, you can't handle the truth. That's true. Some of us avoid the truth because we can't handle it. The truth of God. Can you handle the truth of God? Or would you want to handle the truth of whatever celebrities are saying, this is the way I feel God has chosen me? No. Can you handle the truth of God? Be, a, be filled with the Holy Ghost and stop being afraid of the fire. So here we are, Pentecost in one accord. If I were to count, I can emphatically say that each of us are in one accord, in one belief, waiting, praying for the promise. My God, right now, Lord, right now, Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Let the Holy Ghost come on down. You think about God and you think about His power and you feel it in your inside. And it just comes down on you and then all of a sudden all the physicality and things go away and spirituality comes into us. And we see things for what they are. His spirit is speaking to some of us right now. Yes. Things that you can't explain are happening. Let him have his way. You will be filled if you let him. The fire is in your veins. Let him have his way. It's time to go to the next level. The enemy can't hold you back. When you're in God's will, you need to shake him off. Shake him off. Just shake him off. You know that you need help. A lot of us need help, but we don't want to ask for it. We don't ask one another. Because <coughs> that would show that I'm weak. But God sees you. He just looks down. I always say, He's up there looking like this. He said, If you would just look at me, I will help him. The gift is yours. All you have to do is accept it. Accept it and you will be filled. I say, just, I say be filled. Let God pour his spirit onto you. Let it overflow out of you to someone else. Just feel the fire. It won't burn you. It will purify you. The fire has power. The fire that heals the living is free. I know we just say that, but it's true. What your desires are, God said, this is what you need, this is what you want, God will give it to you. If it's in his will, have you prayed to him? Let nothing separate you from the love of God. Today is the day to grow stronger. Mark it on your calendar that on Pentecost 2020 is when I say, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to be joyful, thankful, and submissive. I'm going to keep praying unto you. I'm going, to, I'm going to just look at things for what you tell me to be and not what others want me to be. Always have joy. Always be thankful. Always be submissive. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for allowing me to share this message with your people. Lord, these words were not mine, but yours. You know the circumstances in each and everyone's life. Lord, all I can do is that you use me to guide me to them. And provide help as needed when I minister. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, amen. And I want to just say this testimony, if y'all can sit down.
When my father passed away, my best friend, in January the year started that way, and everybody experienced death anyways. We're all, and I hate to say, a product of the environment, and that's what teaches us. And he told me, men don't cry. Men are strong. You got this. You keep pushing on. Shake it off. To me, my dad was the, um, he was just super. That's how I looked at him. And I mourned in my own way, going through it, and then the, Experience of life hits us like a ton of bricks. One of those messages that Ellie Hughes preached us. And here we are in COVID. And I'm walking around going like, what in the world? No time to be grieving about things I can't change. But I gotta take a self-assessment of where I stand in God. And he told me, don't be afraid of the fire. And that's where I'm at. So every time I see someone, I love you for who you are. Don't be afraid of the fire. I love you no matter what. Yes, you're talking bad about me, but I still love you. I pray for you. I will call out your name. Nothing can stop me. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Lord, I love you. We have to believe in a principle of why we do things. That wasn't Joaquin's principle. That was biblical principle. I have to look at God, love him more than my father. I have to love God more than my wife. Because at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic when I say it, it's only your soul. Ravi Zacharias passed away recently. One of his quotes was, the body was made for the earth. The, I forgot, but at the end he says, the soul was made for God. Not for me, not to impress you, it was made for God. So in this Pentecost, if you remember anything, you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't forget to be joyful, be thankful, and be submissive. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. God bless you.